But I wanted to show this from Surah Luqman where it talks about مِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْتَرِ لَهُ الْحَدِيثِ From the people that are those who buy useless amusement. Huh? That, that destructive amusement, that, that vain talk to try to misguide people. Now, this is in Surah Luqman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it in the Quran. This is not something that yani, is from a scholar or something. But now, what is Lahul Hadith? What does it mean that useless talk or that, that useless amusement? What is the meaning of that ayah? We cannot give our own meaning to the Quran. We cannot say, in my opinion, it means this. Who are you? We go back to what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Sahaba radiallahu anhum that were present when these ayat were revealed said about these ayat. And from this, as you can see from your screen, we have the report that Imam Ibn Kathir brings. And I'm going to focus on this one here that he brings from Ibn Jarir al-Tabari. And he brings the entire chain of narrations here. And he says that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, Ghina, Wallahi alladhi la ilaha illahu. And he repeated this three times. He swore. Who, who is this? Huh? Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Who is Abdullah ibn Mas'ud? He is a Sahabi or no? Allah, man, you guys all, nobody knows Abdullah ibn Mas'ud Sahabi? Respond. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud is the one that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, go take the Qur'an from him. Yeah. Go and learn the Qur'an from him. He is the one that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained about his understanding and his recitation of the Qur'an. So what does Abdullah ibn Mas'ud say with three times taking qasam on Allah? That the meaning of this ayah, what Allah is forbidding you from is music. See? Now again, this is a summarized. I have scanned the other page where Imam Ibn Kathir also mentions the rawayat from others like Amr ibn Ali. And this is a sanad that goes all the way to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud as well. Again, and from others. And as you can see on the bottom, in the takhreej, in the, in the checking of the hadith that's done on Tafsir ibn Kathir, it mentions that Tabari has mentioned this with his sanad. Al-Hakim, Imam Al-Hakim, Nisaburi, the one who wrote Mustadrak ala Sahihain, he mentioned this, and he mentioned that it was authenticated by him, by Al-Hakim, said this hadith is sahih. And Al-Dhahabi, Imam Al-Dhahabi, who did the checking on Al-Hakim, also said that it was sahih. And it mentions all the way down to where it says that some graded it to be Hassan, again a reliable narration. But now, now, we have one of our brothers, and I'm again, I'm, I'm not mentioning names because this is not about personalities, rather about the issues, who, who made a video saying that he doesn't have much knowledge of hadith, he begins with that. And then he goes on to say that the narration of Abdullah ibn Abbas, not the one of Abdullah ibn Masood, he didn't even mention this, has a drunk in the chain. That's very interesting. And I have reached out to the brother, uh, Sheikh Karim is a witness and our brother Eddie is a witness. And I've repeatedly asked the brother that with respect to discuss this issue with me offline. I'm not trying to embarrass anybody. And show me who's a drunk in that Sanad. And I will show you the Asaneed. Imam Al-Hakim, Al-Dahabi, these experts of hadith from the past, and we'll talk about present day scholars as well, reviewed these Asaneed and said that there is no doubt to their authenticity. And if you make a claim like that, you need to bring evidence. You need to give the name of which Rawi. Rather, these ahadith are not just mentioned through singular chains. Please pay attention to what I'm saying. One of the mistakes some of our brothers make, and they copy this usually from others, is they take a single chain, and they find some criticism by some scholar of hadith, and they disregard the hadith. Not realizing that there are multiple chains to these ahadith. This is an amazing work on tafsir. It's a mawsua tafsir mathur. It's a collection that's been done recently. And this is from my library at home. 
What they did is they went through the books of hadith and the books that are especially a hadith on tafsir. And the books of tafsir that are mathur, that rely on the author, and they collected all those together. So when you look up an ayah, you can find all the narrations that are from the Rasul والسلام, or Sahaba about an ayah. that are athar, that are actual narrations. You will see on your right, regarding this ayah, and lahu al-hadith, and the meaning of it, there is the narration from Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhuma. Now, the first narration I presented was from who? Don't confuse them. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Who said what about this ayah? What does it mean? Music. This is Abdullah ibn Abbas now. Who is Abdullah ibn Abbas? The cousin of the Prophet alayhi salatu salam. What else about him? The Prophet alayhi salatu salam made dua for him that Allah gives him the understanding of what? Wahi of the Quran. And praised his understanding. I want you to pay attention because if somebody says Ibn Hazm said or somebody says Sheikh Fulan said we're not here to, to compare between we're talking about those Sahaba that Rasul alayhi salatu salam taught them the tafsir and told us to take the tafsir from them to understand the Quran from them Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma is the one that Umar ibn Khattab radiyan would sit him amongst the senior Sahaba even though he was very young and he would ask questions to show the senior sahaba how deep his knowledge of the Quran is. And those of you that know, you know about his tafsir of Idaja Nasrullahi wal Fath and how he understood it deeper than others. And that's why Rasulullah sallallahu praised his understanding and made dua for him. Here, not do we not only in one chain, if you look up on the right hand side, the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Seventh, all those chains independently, through independent chains, go back to Abdullah ibn Abbas and the reference to which books that are right there as well, that all mention that this is music. So Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, separate. Abdullah ibn Abbas, separate. Now where is the drunk? <laughs> Again, we're not, this, this is out of love. For our brother, that we've kept our mouth shut with his name, because we're not here to cause fitin. We're here to clarify the evidences. And I have sent all these to the brother. Shaykh Karim, you're my witness. And repeatedly I asked the brother, if he can talk offline, and he has turned down that offer. And even though we had a timeline, we've delayed it, just because we are not people of fitin. We are people of adilla, of evidences. Now, this is one of the very early books of Tafsir, Ibn Abi Hatim. He has also mentioned the narrations as well. And he gives from Atta, and he gives from Malik Ibn Dinar, and others, and Qatada, and, uh, and Ibn Abbas as well. And he gives their Asanid. And I present this to show that this has also been reported from many of the Tabi'un, the next generation who took the Tafsir from the Sahaba. They also mentioned the same thing. Imam al-Siyuti, one of the great early scholars who focused on Athar, he, in his book, Dur al-Manthur, he has also collected those evidences and narrations and he has presented them as well and he relied upon them. Now, what I want to do next is not just to give you the chain, but also to explain the books of hadith that mention these. Okay? As I mentioned, Al-Hakim has reported this in his Mustadraq, ala sahiyain and Al-Dhahabi authenticated, as you saw earlier. This is Imam Al-Bukhari's book, Adab Al-Mufrad. Adab Al-Mufrad, Imam Al-Bukhari, and this is not the Sahih of Imam Al-Bukhari, this is his book on Adab. He also mentioned this twice in the same book, and this is the riwayah uh, from Abdullah ibn Abbas. And now, you, he also has the riwayah from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, in the takhriz that I have, it mentions the checking of Sheikh Albani. And this is, again, when we go to the contemporary scholars of hadith, meaning those from this last, last generation, no doubt, whether you agree with everything or not, you would have to admit 
that Sheikh Albani was one of the greatest scholars of hadith of that generation. And there were others, we're not saying he's the only one, but, they, but he was no doubt somebody who did a great service for hadith. He has a book called Silsala Hadith al-Sahiha. And in this book, he takes the narration from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, and he discusses all the different chains. Now if there is a drunk in the chain, you don't think Sheikh Albani would see it? He discusses all the chains and he comes to the conclusion that these narrations are Sahih. Huh? Now, I went to the books, not just from the later scholars in this, but even the ones that have the narrations across the board, like Sunan al-Kabir of al-Bayhaqi, and I looked up the actual chains of narration. So this has the whole chain from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, where he took the qasam and he said, this is music. Once again, the whole sanad is here. My challenge to our brother, where is the drunk? Right? Even if some of these chains had some criticism, you have to remember that there are multiple chains from Abdullah ibn Abbas, from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, looking at those together, no doubt, that these are authentic chains. Now, why did I take the time to scan all of these and put all these up? Why? Because when we discuss something, we respect people's rights to have opinions. We're not forcing our opinion on anybody. And we respect the fact that ulema had khilaf and, and issues where they disagreed. But what do we follow? Do we look for excuses? Do we look for khilaf to make haram halal and halal haram? No. We follow the evidences. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Luqman has condemned those who purchase idol talk, له الحديث, and when Abdullah ibn Abbas and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and many other, Jabir radiyanu and other from the Sahaba as well. Like I said, this is a summary of what all I collected. And many of the tabi'un after them, all of them clearly said that included in that, and we're not saying it's restricted just to music, but included in that is music. And these narrations are sahih. Then the first thing we have to say is that music is haram from the Qur'an. Hmm? Let me explain. غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. Who who is that? The Jews and the Christians, right? مغضوب عليهم اليهود ولا الضالين النصارى. How do we know that? Because there is hadith on it, right? When we look at the meanings of ayat, we don't give our own meaning. We don't say, you know, مغضوب عليهم is the guy who cut me off in traffic. Why? Because I got upset with him. And Wallah Dalin is a guy who can't follow his GPS. Because that's what linguistically makes sense to me. No. We go back on the usul of tafsir. We look at the Quran itself. We look at a hadith. We look at a qual of sahaba. We look at the authenticity of those. We look at the qual of tabi'un. And when we have something clearly, authentically established, as Ibn Kathir and Asyuti and all of them clearly accepted those views and looked at those asaneed, then we say, this is the meaning of the ayah. And if that's the meaning of the ayah, then this is what the Qur'an tells us. That music is haram. Now, are there certain exceptions? Yes, but you will have to prove those. The usul in fiqh is, the am, the general is established, unless you have adillah for khas. Unless you have an adillah for something particular. You cannot take khas and put it on am. Let me explain. For example, if you are here living in Dallas, and it's time for dhuhr, how many rak'at are you going to pray? How many are you going to pray? You guys sure? You don't pray six, sir? Huh? Four rak'ah, the fard of dhuhr. Let's say you live in Dallas, and for one day you're visiting Denver. You're going to go see Sheikh Karim. Listen to his dars and benefit. You're there for one day, and you're on the way, you're already close to Denver, and you stop over to make Dhuhr Salah, how many rak'at are you going to make? Two. Hmm? There is hadith. 
for the musafir. Now, your hadith for two raka'ah as a musafir, can I, while living in my city of San Diego, not traveling, say, well, Rasulullah prayed two, so I'm going to pray two. Can I? If I'm in my own city. No, why? Because that was khas for safar. That's not the general rule. So now, when we look at the hadith in the sahih of Imam al-Bukhari, and when people talk about it being mu'allak, and again, inshallah, we're going to put all these up, it is not mu'allak and dun al-sanad. It is not without a sanad. With the chain, Imam Bukhari brings the hadith that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa talks about those that will come in the later time, and they will make things haram halal. And from them he mentions music. Now this hadith, Imam Abu Dawood and others have gone through the chain as well and explained it's authentic, no doubt. Imam Bukhari mentioned the chain. He didn't use it as a title heading. This is a misconception some people put. Sometimes Imam Bukhari uses the hadith just as the title. But how do you know he's doing that? He doesn't put the chain. But here he mentions the chain. And I'm willing to sit down with anybody and go through each rawi and show their authenticity. Right? So now, when you have that in the Sahih of Imam al-Bukhari, saying that people will make things like wearing silk for men haram, and, and the drinking of alcohol haram into halal, and wearing of silk from men from haram into halal, from the closer to the day of judgment, these fit in. And from them, listening to music, people will start saying it's halal. From the signs of the day of judgment, in the Sahih of Imam al-Bukhari, how are you going to get around that? They tried to find, oh no, this is mu'allak. How mu'allak? The sanad is there. Go through the chain. Oh no, there is another narration that, that, that doesn't mention music, which has a mistake in the word about silk. Yes, that's a weak narration. Because it makes a mistake. It drops the, 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 the ha and the jim as well, regarding the, the silk. And it makes, so, so how are you going to use a weak narration to undo something with Bukhari? This is people following their desires. Imam Ibn Hajar al-Qalani in Fath al-Bari, he explains the authenticity of that narration and how that narration is an evidence against music. Now, there are many other ahadith, many from Sahaba as well. And inshallah, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm going to make a video or maybe a series where I will mention all of these and I will scan all of them and I will post it for everybody to be able to use. But I want to mention another point. The same brother, he says that I went and talked to some scholars, but he won't mention their name. They don't want their name used. You know, when you're doing something good, you know, usually you have no point with, no problem with mentioning somebody saying that, look, if I ask Sheikh Kareem, Sheikh Kareem, is Salah Fard? Do you mind if I use your name? See, I can use his name, right? Now, if I try to ask him something a little dodgy, a little devious, he might be like, you know what, I'll give you a photo, but shh, don't mention my name. You know? So they're like, I don't wanna, they don't want their names mentioned. But they said in the Hanafi Madhab, it's okay. In the Shafi, this is all wrong. Give your references. A Shaykh al-Islam Taqyuddin ibn Taymiyyah in Majmu al-Fatawa, he clearly mentions that all four of the well-known madhahib are in agreement, Hanafi. Maliki, Shafi'i, Hanbali, all of them are in agreement that music is haram. In fact, entire books were written that stated there is ijma, consensus of the ummah that music is haram. Now, you could disagree and say, no, there were some scholars that, that had different opinions. You could, you could debate the issue of ijma, but you cannot debate the issue that the four madhahib, I went into Hashi ibn Abidin, which is the standard to know the Hanafi Madhab. I went and looked at the Majmu'a of Imam al-Nabawi, and then the works of Ibn, ibn Hajar al-Haythami to look at the, the standard of the Shafi'i Madhab, the, the Hashi of al-Dusuqi for the Maliki Madhab, Rawat al-Murbi' and then it's Shuru' the Sharh of Rawat al-Murbi' then Muntaha uh, al-Iradat and al-Ikna' for the Hanabila. All of the standard Mu'tamil books of the Madahib, they agree music is haram. The four well-known Madahib. So these brothers who make these statements, they do it carelessly. Oh, there's a drunk in the chain. Oh, you know, I talked to a sheikh, I can't mention him, but he said it's okay. 
This is very dangerous. And I want to warn you from taking knowledge from somebody who doesn't provide their evidences. Because the deen is knowledge. And like I said, and I have my witness, that brother, I'm leaving him nameless because we're not here to attack personalities. I have reached out to him. It's been over a month. We're waiting for him, even though he sent other people's videos, so he read our articles. He has not taken us up on the opportunity to sit privately. We're not trying to shame anybody. Just so we can present the evidences, he's afraid to even look at the evidences with us. Here, I'm presenting this. And, and, and the brothers of, and sisters of Dallas, I'm here. Anybody from shuyukh and ulama and a'imma that want to sit privately or publicly to discuss these evidences, I'll fly back with my books on my head and I will present them inshallah. We just want to sit and clarify. If they're on the haqq, let them bring their evidences. We have come with our evidences and we are here inshallah with love and respect and nasiha, well wishing. But I do not wish that the ummah goes astray and we see our children starting to listen to haram that's going to destroy their aqidah and their iman and their, and their akhirah and will take the love of the Qur'an away because some speaker decided to post something without properly checking. With this inshallah, I want to end with one last thing. Um, regarding music, we have the Qur'an. We have the aqwal of the sahaba about the ayat. We have the sahih ahadith. We have the aqwal of the a'imma, the tahrim of it. But I will mention one more thing. Ibn al-Qayyim, he says a beautiful statement. And this has been attributed to some of the sahaba as well. Where he said, nothing grows nifaq, hypocrisy in the heart like music. It grows Hypocrisy in the hearts. Today, there are studies that are published that talk about the effect by non-Muslims. The effect of music on humans. And they have shown that certain beats, certain tunes put people into states of depression, put people into states of wanting to engage in... Uh, marital relations even when they're not married there are studies that have been done about the effect that music has on the human mind Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew this Allah knows everything and he warned us against this some people say no no we're just saying listen to good music well, what's good music where did you get the idea there is good music no, Mozart's good and Tupac's bad. Where are you going to draw your lines? Where in the Sharia is that? You see, when you open that gate, the harm you're doing to the ummah is irreversible. Allah protect us. Now, from the shubuhats that people try to bring, is there were children playing duff, little girls playing the duff on the day of Eid. And Abu Bakr got upset. He said, the, the instruments of shaitan and the Rasul is there. Rasulullah told him, let him. It's the day of Eid. Huh? Tell you. Now, first thing to understand from that hadith is how the Sahaba knew music was haram. That immediately Rasulullah sallam, when he was there, Abu Bakr got upset. And he called them the instruments of shaitan. Like people skip over that part of the hadith. Secondly, like I said, khas does not take am. The particular does not take the general. Remember the two rak'ah example I gave? So if we are to say that little girls playing a particular instrument called the daf, the one-sided drum, on days of celebration is permissible, as many ulema have said, no problem. But you can't take that khas and say all music, guitars, pianos, all of it's halal. That's a trickery. That's like me as a muqeem saying, Rasulullah made two rak'ah, so I'm going to make it even though I'm not a traveler. No. That's for a particular case. So if somebody was to say that little girls playing the daf on the day of Eid is permissible, 
because of that hadith, we'll say that's a khas, that's particular. But the aam from the Quran and the sahih hadith is music is haram, as alcohol is haram. And to make it halal is from the signs of the day of judgment as making alcohol or the wearing of silk and gold for men would be making it halal would be from the signs of the day of judgment. And this is very sad that today respected speakers in our community are pushing this and opening up these above without evidences, making blanket statements of drunkards being in Asanid that Sheikh Albani and others have gone through and showed that there are authentic narrations without any defect when you put them together with all the different chains and so on. And, and nobody is challenging this. Nobody is saying, Sheikh, do you know what you're saying? No, even those like us who want to give advice, people are not willing to sit with us just to even look at the evidences. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and to protect our children and to protect the ummah from the fitna of music and from the fitna of speakers who mention things without verification of evidences, who begin a, a talk by saying that they know nothing or they know very little about hadith and then go and criticize a hadith that Imam Bukhari has mentioned in his sahih. <laughs> Something that you know, amazes me how, how the beginning and end don't match. But we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide them and guide us. And we love all our Muslim brothers and our speakers and our imma. And we say this out of respect. And we say this out of a want of unity upon the kitab of sunnah. Any questions? Faddalu. Tayyib, where is the line that? And nasheed. And nasheed that has no musical instruments. There's nothing wrong with that. Right? It is basically like poetry. And we know Hassan ibn Thabit radiallahu was a poet in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imam Shafi wrote poetry. Nothing wrong with that. But if the sheets have guitars and pianos and all those kind of instruments, then they're music. You know? Especially because many of the nasheed, they have very shirk, uh, shirki kalamat. They have words that are of shirk. So may Allah protect us from that. Inshallah, we'll, we'll transition this into the Q&A. But I'll take questions about this particular subject first. Fadal. Assalamu alaikum. Go ahead. Fadal, go ahead. The brother of the mic. I'll get to yours as well. Go ahead. So how about the trend that we have these days, like people use the, the, the sounds of the mouth, which is called as a cappella, right? And it's exactly like music. So is it halal to use that? And then uh, using of drums outside of occasions? Because that is also termed as halal these days. Tayyib, first and foremost regarding a cappella, a cappella doesn't necessarily mean making the sound of music with the sound. A cappella was a style of singing where they wouldn't, it would be basically somebody freestyling singing, right? Just to give you a definition, right? Now, if you use your voice to make melodious sounds, meaning in the sense that, you know, how you take your pitch up and down, which are called maqamat, I believe, right? And that, as long as you're not mixing with the Qur'an, that by itself is different. But if you take the human sound and you synthesize it with a machine until it becomes a sound of music, right? that's a whole different thing. Do you see the difference? Meaning that if somebody, and I'm not going to try to sing because my voice is horrible and my throat's shot, Right? If somebody takes a high note or a low note when they're singing some poetry, nothing wrong with that. Right? But if you take the human sound and you make it into a drum beat, you make it into a guitar sound, you just, because in the end sound is just frequencies. Right? So now you're trying to cheat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's like the people that put their nets in on Friday and took it out on Sunday and say we didn't, we didn't fish on Saturday. Why? Why? Look, you know, I mean if you, look, the halal is bayyina, is clear, haram is bayyina. And that which is in the middle, the shubuhat, if you go there, you will fall into the haram. So stay away from it. We say that's not permissible. If you make it synthesized using equipment into the sound of music, then it becomes music. But, like I said, if somebody uses high notes and low notes in, in, in their poetry or their spoken word, nothing wrong with that. 
تفضلوا يا اخي يا اخي ان ذا فرونت ذس واز يور كويشن از ويل يور جود اوكي ذا برادر هير وذ ذا جلاسز ان شاء الله ان ميدل ذا يا سوري يا عربي برادر دون ذا بيرد دون ذا تو ايز اند ذا نوز يو نو هيم جو هيد اخي سو ذس ذات مين كان يو فور ان اكزامبل Like uh, in college, you know, we have educational videos that have music in the background, right? Does that I'm sorry, mean? Sorry, what is what's the first thing you said? So, like, okay, let's say I'm watching a video about how to code, right? And then they have like some lo-fi hip hop in the background. Can I, for an example, lower the uh, the volume of the video and watch it, or you know, just watch it without listening to? The, I guess not concentrating on the music. So again, if you're able, like, uh, what video was it? I didn't understand that you're watching. Just, just, just like a rant, like any video educational video. Yeah. Okay. Educational, um, just in general, like you know, can you watch videos that have music in it, but just lower the like the volume? Right. So again, if you can turn the the music section off where you don't hear the music, that's perfectly fine, right? Now again, maybe you're in school. and you have an online class and you're watching a video that's a part of your curriculum and has some music in the background that's not your choice right you're 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 in a class right if you're able to avoid it yes if you're unable to avoid it because it's something necessary like a video you have to watch for school then khalas you watch it ask allah for forgiveness you do the best you can i mean just think of it this way if you are in school and you're trying to get your degree because you're a man you need to earn this and the online class has a woman with no hijab on no khimar on and she's giving a lecture and it's an online class you have to watch it you have to take notes we we say you should do your best not to look protect your eyes the best you can and ask allah for forgiveness right because there are things that unfortunately as society has digressed we have to deal with right you go into a dentist office there's going to be music in the background we know that but that's not your intention That's not what you're going for. You're trying to finish your class. You're trying to get your teeth fixed. That's what's important. Avoid it the best you can. Yep. Uh, on, on the Why same music. Uh, I think the sisters have a question. Yes. So I heard, like around, that you're not supposed to sing the Quran when you're like reciting it. So how do you, how do you like? distinct between actually singing the quran and then just reciting it melodiously alhamdulillah wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa the prophet ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said laysa minna man lam yataghanna bil quran he's not one of us the one does not yataghanna bil quran that means recites the quran if it's correct to say with a melody with a, with a, with a voice that is beautiful Uh, this is what is actually upon us to recite the Quran differently than when we recite a book. You have to beautify your voice. But the issue of reciting the Quran in the tones of the people of music, this is evil. Right? You recite the Quran from the best of your ability to beautify your voice. And people, this is something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives whoever he gives beautiful voices to recite the Quran. So this is part of learning the Quran, whether it's for men and women. But of course, if women they recite, they don't recite like that in front of men, uh, but rather among themselves or to herself, without beautifying her voice in front of other men. Allah.